Okay, people, uh, Rand Thornton here, coming at you again from just for Mormons and other saints. Um, you know, there's been a lot of things that's been happening uh, just in the last couple of days that um, are extremely disturbing. Uh, Mike Emery um, has been arrested. His first, second, and fourth amendment rights are being violated. And I'll guarantee you before it's over with, his Sixth and Eighth Amendment rights will be violated also. And what I mean by that is he's not going to get a speedy trial. And he's going to be detained indefinitely. Okay? Um, he's not going to get a speedy trial. He's not going to make bail. I hope I'm wrong. But I don't believe it. I, I believe it's going to go through the same thing that all the other patriots are going through. Can you say Patriot Act, indefinite detention? That's what's happening here, folks. Whether they're saying it or, to, or not, whether they're describing it as such or not, that's exactly what is happening. Have you ever noticed how the government always accuses the patriots of exactly what they are doing? This conspiracy thing. They're accusing our patriots of conspiracy. And that's exactly what they're doing. The fact of the matter is, Mike Emery has exposed their thievery and the Malia Refuge and their conspiracy to take even more ranches. He exposed that. And that is the real reason they went after him. It has nothing to do with you know, the fact that he had a machine gun. And I really could care less. As far as I'm concerned, that's just another violation of uh, Patriot Second Amendment rights. You know, a conspiracy is, is nothing more than something that can't be proven, you know, planned by two or more people. But if you can prove it, that's a whole different thing. I don't know how many times I've been accused of being a conspiracy theorist on Facebook, in person, face to face. You know, I tell people about the chemtrails, tell people about the fluoride in the water. Tell people about the overreach of the government and their ultimate designs, like Henry Kissinger talked about, <clears throat> taking our food supply away, the poisoning of our water with fluoride. Oh, that makes me a conspiracy theorist. All those things can be proven. Every single one of them can be proven. But this, these charges of conspiracy against our patriots, they can't be proven. No, they can't be proven. A close examination of the law that they're using that goes all the way back to the, to the Civil War will show that that law was in supportive of the Constitution of the United States, specifically Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Now, what's going to happen when these federal prosecutors and judges try to apply that law to our patriots. Close examination will show that it doesn't apply. It's non-applicable. So who's conspiring? Who are the big conspiracy people now? Again, isn't it amazing the government always accuses the people of exactly what it is in the process of doing? And all these bills, they always come up like the Patriot Act. It's always exactly the opposite of patriotic. Or any, any of these bills they come up with. Obama and his executive orders and the little labels and titles they give them. They're always exactly the opposite of what they're going to do. Now, you tell me. Who's the big conspiracy people? Look what they're doing to our patriots. As I said, can you see, say, the Patriot Act? Our patriots 
have now been in prison for like three months without a conviction. They've been denied a right and speedy, their right to a speedy trial. They have been denied bail. They've been, they were denied their First Amendment rights. They're de being de they were denied their Second Amendment rights. And by the way, you can't have First Amendment rights without your Second Amendment. They go hand in hand. So out there at the refuge, when you're exercising your Second Amendment right to carry a firearm, it's no business of theirs why you're carrying it. It means nothing. They're out there exercising the First Amendment rights and to peacefully protest in assembly. The federal government can't handle that. Why? Because they are the big conspiracy. They have turned into the biggest conspiracists the world has ever known. And people, what? what who's saying what? I want to bring up the Mormon leadership because they're an embarrassment. I haven't heard one single thing from them, but I know for a fact that our patriots, the Mormon patriots, they were threatened with their church membership because I was there. I was there when it happened. I know all about it. In the Mormon belief system, the Constitution of the United States is considered scripture, is considered very, very sacred. In fact, in the 89th section of the Doctrine and Covenants, talking about the Constitution, it says, anything more or less than this cometh of evil. And also in the Doctrine and Covenants, we're given the commandment to forsake all evil. There's no wiggle room in there. If you're, if you, if you say you're a Mormon, if you say you're a Latter-day Saint, you have no wiggle room. And I just found out recently a, a Facebook friend of mine, a wonderful lady, and I'm not going to mention her name, but she's basically been threatened and intimidated by her own church members for the things that she's been posting. Uh, a lot of stuff from Ezra Taft Benson and others, early church leaders, John Taylor, Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and what they said about the Constitution of the United States, and the warnings that these things were going to be taken from us if we didn't do something about it. And those warnings go way, way back. They go way back to the early days of the church, when the United States government had an execution order in the state of Missouri. And the Mormons were always fighting for their constitutional rights in the Salt Lake Valley. They went there to get the hell away from the corrupt government that was corrupt even back then. And they're doing a pretty good job of it up until one Heber J. Grant, the seventh president, you know, the one that that uh, was prophesied of would lead this church to the brink of hell, okay? And he's the one, under the threat of excommunication, forced the members of the church to accept the Federal Reserve banking system, the financial arm of the kingdom of the devil. And here the church, how many years has been excommunicating its members that refuse to pay illegal taxes? This Ponzi scheme, which is destroying the world and come very close to destroying this country, because whoever controls the purse strings controls the people. Our lot police force have been federalized, militarized. Why? Because they got to have all the toys, you know? They got to have all the toys. And the federal government comes in and promises them, oh, we'll give you this piece of equipment and this piece of equipment and this training. And everything's changed. They're not peace officers anymore. 
You know, they're war tactics, like the Patriot Act said. We're living in a war zone, a battle zone. That's what the Patriot Act says. And they've created it. They created it themselves. Our government funded ISIS, okay? And in this country right here, I mean, the FBI gets caught all the time committing these false flags. And then when they arrest people and say they discover it, they take all the credit for it and get right down to it. They're the ones that started the whole thing. You talking about a conspiracy? That's who your big conspiracy is by. We need to wake up, people. And I think the only real hope is in the state of Utah, southern Utah more specifically. Right here. Right here in southern Utah. We got a petition, a redress of grievances, which I keep harping on. And I'm going to keep harping, I'm going to keep pounding on it. And it's before the state legislature and the governor, the Supreme Court and the Attorney General. to fulfill its obligation to the Constitution of the state of Utah. And there's some really good parts in there. One is, by law, they're to fulfill or fund the militia, the unorganized militia. And if we do that, if we get that done, there's plenty, plenty people that are willing to jump in and be part of the militia because they see what's going on. They know what's happening and they're tired of it. Our ranchers are tired of it. Our sheriffs are tired of it. Our farmers are tired of it. Our miners, they're all tired of it. They're tired of being kicked around and having all their possessions stolen and their lives destroyed. And for all you Mormons that work for the BLM and the Forestry Service, you disgust me because we live in the information age and you know what's going on. You are pathetic, pitiful human beings to oppress your brother and at the same time destroy your own country, destroy your own state. How pitiful, how pathetic is that? You think that your job is more important than your fellow man. You think your job and your family is more important than our families. But you know what? You're a leech. And you know what happens when you suck the host dry? It dies. And you die too. You're not doing one good thing for humanity. You're not doing one good thing for your fellow man. You're not doing one good thing to support your government, the Constitution of the United States, you're doing none of those things. You are apostates. The very definition of the word apostate, that's what you are. And now you're attacking my Mormon Facebook friends for putting out the truth? You're going to go to hell. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself in the lower pits of hell. Okay, I think I got off track a little bit there. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know how long this can keep on going. We're losing our rights one after another every day. Every single day. And they're coming up with new laws every day. Look at the EPA. It just did everything it could to control all your water. Everything. Well, they run into a little, somewhat of a roadblock. They never quit, though. If you think they're going to quit, i got a bridge I'll sell you. The BLM, you think they're going to quit? They're not going to quit until they take over the entire food supply. they got this sage grouse thing that's coming down now. Oh, my gosh. What a farce. They get that thing, and I guarantee you, if you don't do something... That bill's going to be passed. That federal bill will be passed by the Fish and Wildlife Services. And they're going to control every inch of ground that you live on right now, both public and private. They will control it, and they will control you. 
I've seen this, I've been watching this for 20, 30 years, this garbage that's been going on by the BLM and the Forestry Service. And those guys that work for them, they're just as culpable, as I said before. You got a bunch of narcissistic personalities. They do not care about you. And the only thing they care about is what they have in themselves. Even the devil loves his own children. They're all traitors. They're all committing treason. Every single one of them. And you know what? Your silence is deafening. The silence is deafening. This is a big train coming down the tracks getting ready to hit us head on. And what are people doing? You know? What are they doing? Especially the Mormons. Oh, we can't get involved, you know? You know, the Mormon church is a corporation. It's a corporation, and by definition, they're not living the law of the land, which God told us in the 98th section of the, Con of the Doctrine and Covenants, is the Constitution. They're so afraid of losing their 501c3 tax status, they'll do whatever the government tells them to do. And you know what? The Mormons are all preppers. Well, got food storage. <laughs> I remember when the church came and asked us for all that information. How much food storage we got? How long will it last? Where's it at? You know, names, phones, address. They gave it all to the federal government. <laughs> They're in cahoots with this great big conspiracy. And what do you hear from your church leadership? <clears throat> Thomas Monson? He never says anything about anything that's really worthwhile. You know, I've been hearing the same things in church conference since the day I was converted. There's nothing new under the sun with those people. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Three times he told Peter, feed my sheep. They're not feeding the sheep. At least not in spiritual things, they're not feeding the sheep. They're telling them lies and garbage. Oh, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. How stupid are you? How long you got to hear the same thing? You know, where's the voice of warning? It's supposed to be your brother's keeper. Tell them what's happening. They're not telling you what's happening. Every dead blast one of them. They all need to be replaced. Every member of the church has the right to not sustain these false leaders. Don't sustain them. If you don't sustain them, what are they going to do? Let's get rid of them. Every single one of them. And as the 64th section of Doctrine and Covenants says, I believe it's verses 37, 38. Actually, it's the 64th. 37, 38. Even the bishop will be replaced if he's a hypocrite and a liar. I want to tell you what, there's all kinds of hypocrites in that church. you got people, homeless people all over the place in Salt Lake City there, and these suckers are living in multi-million dollar mansions. How dare they? And don't tell me it has nothing connected with your tithing money. Either directly or indirectly it is. Guaranteed. Okay. So everybody knows where I'm coming from. Especially my Mormon friends. I have no sacred cows. I do not care. I don't care for one minute. All I know right now is my brother's are in prison away from their families that's what I know and they're suffering they're being tortured and this has got to stop it's got to end because I do not believe for one second they'll ever see the light of day unless we get we get mad and we get active. And if you don't, I don't care. You better have a good excuse for when you stand before God and your Maker. Because those, those people, those patriots that are in prison, they're the best people on the face of this earth. The best blood that God has ever put here. 
the most valiant, the most loyal, faithful people that's ever graced this earth, bar none. Bar none. I know a boy. I can't say I knew him because I still know him. Lavoie is a great man. They're, they don't come any greater. They don't come any greater. And I just wish I could wear his boots and be the kind of man that he was. And I'll guarantee you he's, he's exalted. And if you want to be with him, you better honor him. And not just with your lips. You better get out and actually do something. And I presented a plan time and time again. I'm going to continue to present it. And that plan is very simple. It's very, very simple. It's going to start in the state of Utah, southern Utah. Let's get the militia funded. Is that going to directly get them out of prison? No. But it's going to send a hell of a message. A hell of a message because we will kick the BLM out, the Forestry Department out, the FBI Department, every other fe illegal federal agency. And we will send a message. And then we're going to go to the state of Arizona and the state of Idaho, the state of Nevada, and we'll keep going until we get back to Oregon. And if our patriots are still there, hey, we will we will take them out of those prisons. And if somebody's got a better idea, a better plan, I want to hear it. Because I've heard every single one of them. And I can't come up with a better plan. Protests are great. They're wonderful. It keeps them out in front of the, of the people, what's going on. But it's limited. I'm not saying quit protesting. You just keep it up. Let's keep protesting. But at the same time, the silent majority in Utah, call your state legislature. Call your representatives. Call your governor. Talk to your sheriffs. Tell them you want the militia funded by state law. Thank you, and God bless.